All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the amazing, amazing K character block. With starting with Ko. Um, my name is Rizan. With me is Kadarev. Hello. Yep. Kadi has played this game extensively and sure. uh, yeah. mm -hmm. knows a lot about it. I run Okami. This is basically the same. I was told. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so without further ado, we'll just get going in three, two, one, go. Yeah. All right. It's okay too. The second installment in the franchise, the one that, if you know any KO, you probably know this one. Uh, starting off, uh, you may have noticed that the game is not in a normal language. <laughs> so, I'm playing on the retail version, which is the first release of the game uh, that ever came out, and it's only in Polish. And I'm playing on it because it has the most skips. So, um, the run, any percent is pretty simple. Uh, the goal is obviously to just reach the credits. And to do that, we will be collecting 3,000 ducats, which is the currency in this game. And that will allow us to unlock the final set of levels um, that we need to, you know, reach the credits. Um, as I come through here, I've already done one skip. The funky jump on the well to skip a cutscene. Now I'm coming over here and jumping out of this water, uh, which normally you're not supposed to double jump out of water, uh, but because of how the water cycle works, when it's at its lowest, uh, when you jump, you actually count as being in air, not in water, uh, so you can double jump. And anyway, I'll be coming through here, uh, collecting all the coins, uh, and yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it for the basics. Here is another skip, this is a river jump. Uh, you're supposed to... Oh, that might not work, yeah. Whoops. Uh, so this is another trick that's kind of dependent on the water cycle, and because I kind of messed up earlier, uh, I didn't get the cycle that I wanted. Uh, but it's another sort of throwing minigame where you throw some nuts at a tree, knock it down, and then you can cross, but instead you can just do a precise jump. And that works. Uh, here I'm skipping lowering this gate by just jumping over some janky collision. Um, and yeah, another, another skip right here. Uh, you're supposed to go on the bottom of this net and sort of like grab onto it with your ears, which is an animation, uh, because of course it is. Uh, but instead you can just go on top, which is much faster. Uh, I guess a bit about the movement. You notice me rolling, jumping, and then swinging my tail. Uh, that is because, well, that's obviously the fastest way to move. Um, rolling is really fast, however, it has some slowdown at the end, uh, which we cancel by jumping. And then we tail swing because uh, doing any attack sort of locks your vertical position. Uh, and so it lets me stay closer to the ground, so I can roll again really quickly. Uh, I am messing up the skip, which is not that difficult, I promise. There we go. Uh, so you can get stuck in the corner there and jump out of it to get some extra height. Uh, normally you're supposed to free a beaver, uh, which will activate that water wheel, uh, which would normally let you go up, but again, no need. And uh, that's pretty much all the skips for the first level. There's like one more tiny cutscene skip. Um, but yeah, other than that, pretty basic stuff. Uh, there will be some more involved skips later on, but for now, we're starting off kind of slow. Uh, we've got this really fun mini game where you have to uh, collect these badgers and sort of uh, encourage them to enter the halls. Uh, encourage is a good word because it's it's pretty much just a suggestion if uh, if they want to cooperate or not. Um, yeah, if if you were wondering, this is where like ninety percent of the runs die because haha, <laughs> screw you. Um, yeah. We got something real quick to read. Go ahead. I do have something real quick to read. We have a $15 donation from Aquas saying, Hello, Riffin. Hello, Aquas. <laughs> Thank you for the $15. <laughs> Alright, coming up on the end of the first level. Got 100 coins. The coin routing is actually kind of interesting in this run. Um, because of the sort of requirement of the 3000 ducats, you actually are kind of limited on how much you can skip. Uh, it's not really a problem right now, but the routing for this category is quite tight. 
like adding more skips now would mean going out of the way for coins more, which is not ideal. But what needs to be done? Uh, which is another sort of reason why the auto scroller sections here, which are quite plentiful in this game, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately in this case. Uh, obviously, auto scrollers is not what you really love to see in a speedrun, but it's a section which is really hard to skip, and it has like tons of money, which is really nice for the routing. So you don't have to worry as much. Um, yeah, about going out of the way for that. And this one's coming to close pretty soon. Hopefully I won't uh, be stupid and fall into the water like I tend to do. Skip the springs because the springs are slow. There we go. Can't skip these springs. They're kind of required. Yeah, so for these auto-scrolling segments, there is a certain degree of rubber banding, so you <coughs> basically will never be able to fully run away from whatever is chasing you. But uh, yeah, there's also some leniency if you mess up, so there is not like one, the only one path you can take. Yeah. Gonna come up here on this weird collision that just sticks out. Let's me skip uh, having to deal with all those tentacles. Um, so maybe a bit about the collectibles that we're getting, because I explained the ducats already, but there's a couple more things. Uh, there's stars, which uh, mostly drop from enemies, and there's some like scattered throughout the, the levels. Uh, those give you extra abilities, uh, which uh, we only really care for the first one, which you get for 50 stars. Uh, that will be a glide hat, which will let us cross larger gaps and help a lot with a bunch of the skips in the later portion of the run. I missed that throw. Yeah, speaking of skips, here we are supposed to knock down a few more than just two, but just two of these acorns will do. Yep, exactly. So just as the tail swing throwing a boomerang uh, will sort of lock the vertical position of KO uh, for the duration of the animation, which is really nice for extending some, some longer jumps. And uh, we had the first real instance of combat, which is also quite simple. Uh, all you really need to do is make sure. Oh my goodness! Uh, is make sure that. Oh, nice. Uh, the third hit of the combo lands because nice. Oh, mm. good. All right. Um, about the rest of it. <laughs> no, it's fine. Uh, yeah, so KO has a three hit melee combo, and the third hit in this version specifically always kills, uh, at least the regular enemies. So uh, you can actually start attacking early, miss the first two, hit with the third one, and it'll still kill. Uh, which we changed for some reason in the Steam release, which is. Well, sucks for those runners. Alright. Yes, you are free. You no longer have to collect the crystals. Thank you so much. Uh, maybe we will not call in lava this time? Good. Good progress. And, uh, yeah, what's what's coming up next? There's like a unique enemy that's kind of, kind of funny. Uh, coming up in a short while. Oh, camera. All right. Yep. 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 Makes sense. Yep. Pretty good. Pretty good. Thankfully, there's a checkpoint right here. I kill this fish before it kills me. Yeah. So this dynamite guy he just like follows you around and explodes when he touches anything. But this is the only time in the game he appears. Why? Alright, great trees, finally we can have some fun. Uh, first of all, these badges really want my help. I say no. I jump on their cages and leave. L and ratio. Uh, here we're gonna come up here and there's like a whole staircase thing that you run down and like get chased by barrels and stuff. Not very fun. Uh, and now, uh oh, I'm dead. Oh no. <laughs> Alright, let's do that again. Pretty good. Um, so what happens is because I jump down the staircase instead of uh, instead of just walking down it as a normal person would, uh, I skip the loading trigger for the next uh, chunk of the level. Uh, however, 
it's actually not as bad as it might sound because the collision is still loaded. It's just the textures that are gone. So this is a pretty common thing that you'll see throughout the run, is just me playing the levels kind of blind uh, because the textures aren't there. Uh, so yeah, get used to that. Uh, that bridge was unloaded, but it's 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 like these bridges, so it has holes in them and like coins on top. So I had to memorize where to jump, which isn't too difficult for that one specifically. Yeah, as you can see, his stuff looks kind of bad with the textures on. Uh, but luckily, the loading triggers are still loaded, so you can hit further along loads and get back your textures. Here's another skip. If I whoa. Oh, okay, that was a uh, strange mess up. Cool. Uh, the theme of this run is uh, not taking checkpoints and regretting it. So far. I will uh, I will not do that again. <laughs> Hopefully. I swear I practiced. Okay. Grab the boomerangs. Never mind. I think I have the full boomerangs. Right. So the, the the point of that skip was to skip fighting this gnome over here. It's like very tiny and really worth uh, risking death over. Hello, I would like this check. Thank you. There we go. That wasn't so hard, was it? And then I look like I'm just falling to my death, but actually there's like level down here. They're gonna pick up this hat, cancel the animation with a boomerang throw, and uh, this this is like a temporary glide hat. It's not the star power up that I'll get later, but it lets me uh, glide a bit like that, and uh, yeah, pretty good. There's like very few of those in the game overall, and we pick up even fewer. Right, look at that, another skip coming up. Uh, you're supposed to come like into this tree and then there's like a tunnel thing that I'm going to land on top of instead and hit the loading trigger from outside. And uh, yeah, activate these platforms which are kind of required. Also make like a pretty long jump there to actually reach it. I'm gonna kill this gnome or it's... Firefly, because fireflies act as keys in this world for some reason. Uh, one thing you may have also seen there is it's possible to slightly extend your uh, horizontal range of your jumps or your falls by uh, using the boomerang in this case, right? Yep. Kind of stalls you a bit longer in midair. Exactly. Yeah. The whole which, slide section. Which is the main use of the boomerang overall. Yeah, pretty much. So that in boss fights is yeah. kind of all that good for. Which, to be fair, is a lot. Alright, River Raid. What an exciting level. Mm. Um, so the gimmick of this level is that you have a raft and you just kind of sit in it and wait. Pretty cool. Uh, so first of all, we have to get to the raft. Which hopefully shouldn't be too difficult, but seeing how the, game, the, the run has gone so far, you know, might be, uh, might be a little tricky. Okay, there we go. And yeah, uh, just gonna swim downstream, get a couple checkpoints, because uh, the path is gonna be blocked, so we have to get out of the raft, hit some switches, maybe free a beaver or two, and progress. You can see the first one right here. Uh, a bit of tech that we can do, uh, whenever you start docking, the raft slows down significantly, but punching for some reason resets that slowdown and lets the raft accelerate back to its normal top speed which is much higher. That saves like you know, a fraction of a second time. Now here I am going to come up and do a bit of a damage boost on these spikes. Uh, you're not really supposed to do that but I don't care. Uh, and yeah, free the beaver, get back into the raft. Uh, while I'm waiting for the beaver, I can come over here and grab these coins. Grab the checkpoint, which maybe I should have done earlier, but fine. And coming up is the most important part of the run. Uh, you see there's these two fishermen beavers here. Yep. Like these guys, and uh, they are gay. Oh, that's good to know. That's, yeah, that's the official lore. Mm -hmm. 
So, uh, yeah, enjoy that. Hit the button by rolling into it, because why would you ground pound? And continue onwards. Next checkpoint, right here. Uh, this one has a pretty funny visual bug. Because this is kind of like an area where the water is down, as you can see, and we hit the button to like open the floodgates and raise the water level. But if I manage to do it fast enough, like that, I can actually go through before the water really rises and here, you know, just flies. Why not? Okay, this part can be kind of tricky, so I'll take this checkpoint. This is like really out of the way, honestly, but you know, just get it for safety. Gonna come over here, do another damage boost on these spikes. Jump to this piranha plant and hopefully not get eaten. Maybe I will. I will. It's fine. I'll do it twice. Just, you know, I really wanted to show off this animation. There we go. And yeah, this animation also exists. Alright, glad we're past that. <laughs> uh, this part, fun fact, you might not know, but this part is actually inspired by K01. There's a similar section with the tunnel being like dark and the uh, fireflies lighting the way. It's done much better in this game. So that's nice. And once again, while I'm waiting for the beaver to come and open the gate for me, I'll take a little detour, pick up some coins. That might have been a first frame, which would be really cool. Uh, when you get on the raft, the first frame uh, that it becomes available, you can actually jump out of it. It was not the first frame. That's fine. It's a tiny, tiny time save, but looks cool. And we are getting close to the end of the level. Avoid these porcupines. Or hedgehogs. Thank you for the ledge grab. <laughs> Alright. Just a couple of these sprints to take. Then grab the checkpoint. Should not regret it. Thank you. A couple more of these chest enemies. Convenient stars on the way. And then this gate opens by killing these two gnomes. Nice. They were actually quite nice. Did not hit me. And we're on to the first boss. Pretty cool. So, as with every boss in this game, it consists of three phases, um, which pretty much are like the same thing repeating. So, uh, here it's going to be these lightning bolts coming from the sky. Then I hit a floor tile, knock out these mirrors, and then the boss will come up and drop his shield. I can hit him three times. Like that. Two, three. And then the pattern repeats. So I'm just gonna do the same thing two more times. If you've got anything to read, perfect time. Alright, I got some stuff uh, cooking up behind here. Let's start with a $10 donation from Mifa that says Dongons. 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 Thank you, Mifa. We also got a $25 donation from Zoe. How's this new so fast? Wow, insane. <laughs> Good luck on the run. Thank you so much for those lovely donations. We also got a $10 donation from Poker Face of Arti. Nice. Hello, Riffin. Hello, That's Poker. all he left as he vanished away into the Finna. <laughs> and we finally got a $10 donation from Volley Harmon. Hey, SA, love you all. Thanks for an awesome event. Good luck on the run, Riffin, and jump your kangaroo. Thank you so much for those lovely donations. Thank you so much. Yeah. Perfect timing. We just finished the boss. Really well done. Yeah, I've got some uh, nice Polish dialogue. Uh, gonna pretend I didn't hear that. And we can move on to the second world, which has the hardest strat in the game. Totally. I promise. So yeah, we're, after every boss we basically come back to the hub and uh, have to find our way into the next zone. So this right here, 
is the impossible jump. It's called that because it's impossible. Okay. There we go. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that was impossible. So, that's not how I usually do it. Uh, what I did there is a roll cancel. So, at the end of the roll, you have like three frames, I think, to jump out of it. Uh, again, not usually how I do it. I don't practice roll cancels. So, I just kind of randomly got it, which is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, got that behind us. Now we can do this little jump, which skips a bit. And then another little skip, this invisible ledge. Yeah. Pretty nice. It, it just it's just like some button pressing and little cutscenes and stuff. Nothing too big, but you know it it adds up. And it's nice to have some uh, some minor skips here and there. Uh, coming up is the first proper out of bounds, I think. Yeah, I think so. Uh, so we can jump on this fence ball post and I do it right jump over the invisible wall and just kind of skirt along the outside jump onto this roof which for some reason has ice physics and jump over here and this is very clearly out of bounds um, and this isn't like a huge skip like we're pretty much following along the intended path anyway uh, but this tunnel over here, if you remember that slow ear climbing animation, you'd have to do it throughout this whole thing. So going on top is so much faster, so much nicer. And I'm gonna hope for this guy to move out of the way kindly, thank you. And just skate down here. Going to jump, skip this cutscene, throw a boomerang to preserve some of that momentum from the ice. I didn't grab that checkpoint out of habit. I really wish I had. It's fine, I'll just not die. Just be good for him. How are you doing, Caddy? Pretty good. Not difficult. worried about, about this at all. From what you told me, this is a very consistent part of the current run. Totally. Yep. We're doing good so far, but... No, no reason that would change. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Alright. Cool. See? Easy. Okay, thank you. Uh, fun part of the run, this is pretty much the one section that kind of stops a no-hit run to be possible. It's possible to get through this without getting hit, but it's like close to frame perfect. It's for some reason these two spiders, like you do not have enough time to hit both of them before one shoots. It's like you always get hit there. It would have been really funny if I avoided the damage now, or I wasn't saying that, but alas, did not happen, unfortunately. Uh, oh, we had enemies that we'll not really see much of after this, but... Okay, the kangaroo. Uh, coming up is a, another one of those skips that just uh, helps with not knocking down things to cross a large body of water. Instead, we can do a strafe jump with a boomerang. That was a nice camera, but it still worked, okay. Fine by me. So that, that section, like knocking down some stalactites to make a path, usually takes like, I don't know, 30 seconds. We don't have to do it though. Here's where the boomerangs really come in handy, because um, when you jump from a skate, uh, you can't double jump, you can't tail swing, but you can throw a boomerang. That's the only way to sort of extend the... Uh, uh, the distance you get from these kind of jumps. So it lets us cut some corners here more optimally and stuff, but later on that will be much more useful. Alright, and the rest of the level should be pretty normal, at least for a while. So, if you wanna get something red, go ahead. I have one thing to say. And that is a twenty dollar donation from Mecca. Hello, Mecca. Uh, thank you so much for that twenty dollar donation. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Truly inspiring. Yes, as always. As always. All right. Let's see the cycle. This does not look very good. Okay. It's easy. Mm. 
more funny spiders. Uh, these ones hit you like a lot of the time, but they are avoidable. In theory? In theory, yeah. You like kind of go at that wall and then hope for the best. I don't know. Uh, this is a really stupid strat here and that I really shouldn't go for, but... Why wouldn't you go for it? Easy. Yeah. No problem at all. Was not worried for a second. Just watch me like fail <laughs> right now. Uh, this pillar kind of doesn't exist. It's fine. Yeah. This part is really fun casually when you don't know where the icicles fall and you just kind of, you know, go forward and then the floor disappears. Pretty cool. Alright, and that's that level. Coming up on another one of those fun, fun auto scrollers. Really cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it just exists, kind of. Lots of uh, coins to collect. There's coming up. There's like a snowplow, or as some would call it, a bulldozer. Uh, that makes these ice spikes in in front of me, which. When you just run into them, you just take some damage and continue on, but if you jump onto them, you instantly die. And sometimes it makes like a really cursed sound at video games. Um, so yeah, technically taking these like rails uh, is not optimal. Like you can cut corners better if you just don't, mm. or you can fall into water, that's also cool. Uh, but they have like so many coins on them that it's really... I'd rather take the unoptimal line and uh, lose some time, but not worry about the coins as much. It's definitely one of the bigger uh, coin sort of oriented levels in the route. Uh, this section is really cool. Uh, you don't have to press anything. You just kind of press jump like here. Uh, just like, I don't know, four or five jumps. So you just have to time it kind of well. Not really. Uh, but yeah, no directional input, no nothing. So what's the lore behind the change from snow to lava? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it's here. Yep. It's, uh, it's in the mountains, the volcano probably. Of course. Naturally. Yeah, that section's over. But <laughs> More floor collapsing in front of you. Because, you know, that's... Okay. Didn't, didn't want to jump there anyway. It's fine. Seems to be a theme this run of uh, dying. So maybe there you noticed um, the coins written collected on the first go were not there anymore. So coins, basically, yeah, you, every single coin is unique. So once you collect them, they're gone for the rest of the playthrough. Technically, you could dupe them, but it's like really cumbersome and slow compared to actually collect all of the coins you need. But of course, if you would do a category, let's say like le uh, low percent, where you don't want to complete like basically anything apart from the main objective, you would sit here and dupe coins, yeah, which you, we don't do. Low percent is pretty cool. Yep. You kind of complete the first level and then you dupe coins for two and a half hours, and then you go to the final boss. Mm -hmm. It's a highly entertaining category, I think, but it's a, a little too demanding for me personally. That's why I didn't super it. Speaking of entertaining, uh, I think the projectiles coming from this snowplow are also very entertaining sometimes. Yes. 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 So the snowplow throws these icicles and they're completely random. If they want you dead, you will be dead. Sucks to suck. Mm. Try again. Doesn't look like it this time though. So far. Uh, okay. We should be fine. Cool. Uh, and of course, throughout the uh, the whole section, there is no checkpoints. So if you if you... If the plow decides you're dead, going back to the beginning. To the beginning of the plow section. Not, not the whole level. Uh, shout out to Zoe who donated earlier. Uh, this strat exists. This is Railwalk. So normally you're supposed to like hit a button to get a minecart to show up here and uh, let you ride on these rails, but you can just kind of do this. And it's so free. It's not actually free, it's kind of difficult. But I, I make it look free because I'm just that good. So you could tell by <laughs> the previous levels. Alright, come up here. 
They grab the boomerangs? I did. I did, okay. Hmm. Sometimes they just forget to grab the boomerangs here and then I suffer. Also slowly closing in on the 50 stars we mentioned earlier. Yep. You kind of want. Okay. <laughs> A little spooky. Could be fine. Hopefully I won't get hit again. Yeah. Alright. Checkpoint please. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so closing on the 50 stars, as Cuddy mentioned, uh, that will give me the glide ability, which, funny enough, we, we get it at a point where uh, the next world is just not going to use it at all. So it's, it's kind of a tease, like you get it and then you have to wait a whole, like, I don't know, 5-10 minutes to use it. Uh, this button's fun, for some reason it just locks your movement for a little while, so stand there. Appreciate the amazing elevator. Realizes that I don't think any music is playing, which is kind of awkward, but <laughs> that's fine. Okay, so 50 stars got all that we needed. And now, you know, more ice on lava, because mm -hmm. why not? Uh, yeah, that's pretty much the end of level. Uh, there's like a little more sliding. Like a tiny, tiny skip right here. Like just jump, cut this corner. Use the boomerangs to uh, not fall in the lava. It's pretty helpful. I would generally recommend not falling into lava, but you know, I'm not a doctor. And yeah, coming up is the next boss, the second boss. Hold up. Please stop speaking. The, the best thing is that the line played out pretty much in its entirety, but it did not play out in its entirety. So it's gonna show up again when the game feels like reminding me that I upgraded one of my abilities. Uh, but yeah, this boss, again, three phases. Uh, first one, you shoot these guys with the boomerangs. This guy tells us that the boomerangs won't help me here, and then I get in a catapult. One of those guys. Yeah, uh, this part has some RNG, I okay, can jump to the right or to the left, he jumped to the right which is good RNG, uh, let's hope that happens again, uh, but yeah, same thing again, got anything to read, go for it. Absolutely, we got a $10 donation from Natrium, nice. hello Riffin, happy to see you running, good luck and glad to have seen the beavers have been mentioned, <laughs> the beavers have indeed been mentioned. I do want to refresh everyone while this boss fight is going on, on the incentives going on right now. We are still working on those Step Mania incentives for Eurobeat and Frame Perfect. But we also have some people here donating for the upcoming Red, Red Dead Redemption 2 bid war for naming the horse for that run. And right now we have Casey Frew in the lead with $33, followed by Juan at $10. So if you want to see some change there, make sure to get your donations in. I really like Juan. Let's get Juan to number one. Alright, uh, so we did that boss and coming up is the water levels, which... Shut up. Uh, yeah, so water levels, actually one of the only video games in existence where the water levels are kind of fun. And you'll see why. Uh, but first we have to do this race, which uh, the retail version has Pretty cool camera, uh, doesn't really show you where you're going, but that's fine, I don't need to see anyway. But you can also just kind of do that, don't worry about it. Uh, you can actually go out of bounds with that in the race, but it's not useful, because the the race controls are the most advanced thing this, uh, the developers made for this game, or that race like control of the lap, whatever. Uh, I just was talking and forgot to hit the flaming ring of shortcut things. Uh, yeah, whoops. I'll have to do that on the next go. That's fine. So yeah, three laps. Should take around another minute and a half, hopefully. If I'm not too awful. Uh, the rubber banding present in the chase sequences is not present here at all, so I just kind of you know, left everyone in the dust, and we will not be seeing them again. Weirdly enough, they like don't, you don't lap them either. 
So I'm not sure what's what's going on. Like maybe they just despawn. I don't know. Yeah, so going through that ring, open the shortcut. Which is uh, a lot quicker than going the other way. And thankfully the shortcuts stay open, so after the first lap, ideally you wouldn't jump anymore. Because jumping is slow, it's like, it's time where you're not boosting. Yeah, one more lap. This jump right here is like weirdly precise. I've been getting it pretty well, but a lot of runners struggle with it. It's a strange, strange thing. I think they made it better in the Steam release though. I don't know, don't play that. Don't play that garbage. Hot takes here on twitch.tv slash ESA Marathon. Okay, a community in shambles. Alrighty. And that should be the end of the race. 235 is a respectable time. Not the best, but not the worst. Got quite a few coins there. Yes, so regarding the 3,000 ducats that we need to collect, uh, luckily for us, there's two levels that reward 1,000 each just for completing them. Uh, so you don't actually have to collect, like, you know, a billion of them. Uh, so yeah, starting with the levels where you swim underwater. Uh, and the reason they are fun is this. This little polygon right here. It's actually quite nice. Um, that's why I, you know, give it a big ol' hug. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure to inspect it thoroughly. And, oh, okay. Hello. There's water outside of the water. Uh, and yeah, we're just gonna follow the level. Uh, hit some loading triggers on the way and just go to the end. Uh, the nice thing about KO is the collision is generally one-sided, so it's pretty hard to clip out, but it's really easy to clip back in, so if you find a way out, you know, you can just go. Actually, I guess that's uh, it's only the case for the, the water levels. You don't really go out the bounds that much outside of these, so I guess I'm not sure. Maybe I'm just... Speaking bollocks. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, anyway, that was that level. Here's the famous voice line that every Polish person is going crazy over. And every other person watching is like, What are they saying? Yeah, I can confirm. Okay. So you speak Polish, right? You know what they said. <coughs> yeah. They said to like come over to this net and uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. So uh, we, we've got like a minute. If you wanna, you know. Gonna make a tweet. If you wanna read some donors, go ahead. All right, absolutely. We got nineteen dollars and eighty-seven cents from Zoe once again. Have to donate more because of the rail walk. Also, that strut in Ice Cave was amazing and had like no idea that existed. Uh, oh, and also, also, um, put it to ship. Thank you so much for that donation. Thank you, thank you. Yes. I've made my tweet. <laughs> And we got a $25 donation from Mackenzie. Hey, Capital Riffin! I will find you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for those lovely donations. Thank you, thank you. Got more? Yeah, I can do one more. Let's yeah, see here. We got $5 from S7, Wings7. I like this version of Super Mario 64. Nice PC port with coins and stars to collect. But can we get more info about the beavers? Since when are they together? Can we get some, more, some pictures? I need to know! I want pictures of the gay beavers. Thank you so much for those $5 donation. Thank you, thank you. Alright, uh, so yeah, we just kind of went in a direction for a minute and that's the end of the level. Look at that. Crazy. So that's, that's why the water levels are good, because you don't no. play them. Uh, and this is the single boss that made me put off running this game for so long. This is the reason why the water levels are not good. Yes. <laughs> so, this boss again, three phases. have to shoot down all the tentacles, which are very, very fun. Uh, 
Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yep. One more. Come on. Yeah, there we go. Uh, and then, like, a turtle friend shows up and gives you torpedo controls, which for some reason only does when the tentacles are gone. Like, please? <laughs> Why? Um, and then you, yeah. Hit the, hit the octopus, and then it, like, shoots out little guys, little jellyfish at you. And you have to kill all those as well. Uh, fun fact about this, uh, this level is you can actually hold down strafe to slow down in the water, uh, which sounds really useful for, like, you know, catching the tentacles when they're at a weird position. Uh, however, it also disables your iframes, so if you get hit, you just die instantly, which is really, really awesome of them to do. So I, I will not be using that personally. If you'd like to, go for it. I will just uh, shoot them down normally. So yeah, two out of three. One more to go. And then we'll move on to the best segment of the run, in my opinion. And just checking, I do have 55 stars, which is perfect. More than enough. Yep, yep, yep. Come on. Okay. One cycle. Any one cyclers? Nope. nope. <laughs> uh, the KO2 experience. And you have to waste like 10 seconds swimming around. There we go, okay. That should be it. I say that like I'm uncertain. Better make sure you hit. You can actually miss. And you can like break the torpedo on the walls. I don't know what happens then because I've never done it. But... I'm sure someone has. And it's not a gruesome death at all. Just swim into mm -hmm. the pan. Make some sushi, you know. Pretty good. Anyway, now we're going into the tropics, which is the most uh, flashy, in my opinion, part of the run. Um, yeah. It's also the, the place we're gonna use the, uh, the glide hat, like a ton. I look forward to that. Yeah, shut up. I'm <laughs> gonna say it again. Watch it. But I overlap. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, so, yeah, we kind of jumped under the bridge there, which is like a tiny, tiny shortcut, uh, which is gonna cause this area to sort of unload, but not really. There's supposed to be like. Mountains and stuff over here, like you can stand here, I think. Yeah, <laughs> unload the ground. Um, yeah, like if you haven't played this casually, it might not look too bad, it's kind of janky, but if you played it, something is off. Uh, so the pelican is kind of a recurring gimmick in this world. Uh, the whole idea is you get on it, sometimes you'll get off it at like predetermined spots. It can jump and flap its wings five times. Um, which se might seem like a lot, but uh, the weird thing is that when you wait between flaps, you actually lose uh, the height and the uh, horizontal speed, uh, like on your next flap. So to get the most distance, you just want to get all of them out right away, which is like super unintuitive and a lot of casual struggle with that section specifically. But once you get a hang of it, it's actually kind of fun. Okay, we're gonna skip the glide hat because I have my own. Don't need you. And uh, coming up is a pretty tough out of bounds skip. Uh, there's like a section where you're supposed to uh, get in a barrel, like I did at the very start in the first level, uh, and like swim downstream. But instead, I'm just going to go out of bounds. Hopefully, not fall into uh, Happy Infant Prison. And instead, jump over here and line myself up like this, like this. Jump up this slope. There we go. And this this isn't like super precise, but it's kind of tight. Like you don't want to get lost. Yeah. 
and then there's like a hole in the collision right here, which hopefully, oh, oh, mm. oh, nice, okay. Uh, yeah, the retail camera is not, not amazing, especially when you're messing around out of bounds, but yeah. Uh, Kadi. Cassie. Would you like to explain this coming up trick? I can try. So uh, right there, you saw we already skipped something by uh, damage boosting off the lava, which prevents, usually the lava would rise here, give, making this a timed auto scroller pretty much. But uh, by not doing that, we can actually now go into a certain position right next to a trigger that always puts us on top of the pelican. And the pelican is right now flying up. So as soon as we hit that trigger again, we will once again mount the pelican. So we just wait until it's in a good spot. And then uh, magic. Nice. Oh, not nice. Slightly too early. <laughs> well, uh, OK, well, I just do it. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, the trick is kind of kind of precise. Uh, it's really dependent on like the angle uh, that you dismount at and your timing, and it's like it's a mess. I'm usually pretty good at it, but you know, marathon luck. I'll just do it again. So yeah, as as Kari said, like the the pelican doesn't actually activate anything. There's a trigger that just puts you on top of the pelican. And it doesn't get removed because normally the lava would be rising and uh, it wouldn't be accessible again. But since we skipped that trigger, uh, this angle looks much better. There we go. Okay. And in this cutscene, we still have control of the pelicans. We can just, yeah. Nice. All right. And for some reason in the cutscenes, the five flop limit doesn't apply because, you know, game logic, it's fine. Don't worry about it. All right, uh, coming up is the next pretty flashy skip. Not as flashy as the upward, I'd say, but it's quite difficult. Uh, if I don't get sniped, that is, which is very much a possibility, I kind of suck at avoiding these guys. Okay, it's fine. Uh, so there's like a whole island you can see like in the left side of the screen that you're supposed to go around but instead you can do this long glide uh, which by itself that's the skip that's the time save uh, but because of it um, a part of this section does not load its textures so this is called the blind pelican uh, because we'll do part of the section blind and as you can see there's this like tiny tiny fish in the air which refresh my flaps. So yeah, here's the section I'll actually shut up and try to get this. Of course. Yeah, that, there's a bit of ground there and it's like really finicky. Yeah, luckily there's also a checkpoint right at the start of this segment. Yeah, it's not too bad if you fail a couple times. Go. There we go, okay. Nice. Okay, that was that was Blind Pelican. So uh, I think it's one of the cooler looking strats in the run, but Well, maybe not really looking because you can't <laughs> see. And uh as seems to be a theme in with these levels, you kind of go from one skip to another right away. Uh, so coming up is a sort of mini game almost, where there's like a boulder on some rails and you activate it and you have to uh, activate the rails for it as it goes through. But instead I'll just go back, not hit this checkpoint, which is very relevant. And when I fail this, like so, I will teleport to the checkpoint that it didn't collect because that's just where it's programmed to put you. Uh, and because of the teleport, I actually went through a loading trigger without actually going through it. Uh, so this gate is just unloaded. Normally the boulder is supposed to smash it, but you, know, you can just walk through. So that's a, that's a really... Like, one of the cooler skips, because it's not just like, oh, go out of bounds and skip a part of the level. It's actually kind of involved. It's uh, definitely one of my favorite strats as well. And yeah, I'll just be coming through here. Cut some corners like so. 
and uh, reach the end of the level. And after this is the last level of the trumpet segment. It's the volcano, which, as is the theme of the trumpet levels, also has some pretty pretty cool strats. Uh, weirdly enough, the the out of bounds on the level coming up is not very difficult, but it's one I've been struggling with a lot. So I'll go for a faster strat once, and if I don't get it, I'll go for a slower one, and hopefully get it at most on the second try. Uh, but yeah, these uh, rocks on the wall here can uh, can be climbed, which was maybe not really. Oh, hello, there we go. Not how I usually do that, but it's fine. So you can just get on top of the volcano, and then I'll try to line myself up like so. Approach the white light. And here, turn 90 degrees to the right. Hopefully. Ah, uh, yeah. So slightly off, my aim was bad. Okay, we'll go for the slower strat. It's fine. That strat is really spooky, but, you know, it's fast, so gotta do it. Unless you don't. So yeah, the, the safer strat is you don't line up as carefully here, because it doesn't matter. Just come to the white light. Do a nice 180, and hopefully load this door, maybe. There we go. And with this door, you can easily line yourself up correctly. So take your time, do the line up. Come over here, and just go for it. And yeah, you can see like the this part of the tunnel is loaded. And luckily enough, like there's no real easy way to get out of bounds because there's no like holes in the collision. But there's a spring right here that like just barely sticks out. So that's nice. And uh funny funny thing about this is I didn't get the checkpoint. I tried to grab it but didn't get it. And this uh, like chase section has a couple instant death pits. So if I just fall into them, that's back to the beginning for me. I think my coin can's looking pretty solid. Uh, shouldn't need to go like out of the way for more. Just maybe I should shut up and <laughs> try to focus. Okay, we should be fine. There we go. Checkpoint again. All right. There's still like half of the level left, but that's the most scary part over. Once again, the enemy is just holding the key to the door right here, so get it. There's these vases that like have dudes inside that just smack you with a club and then go back to hiding. I don't know. <laughs> Kind of exists. Friend, I need you to become removed. Thank you. Grab this checkpoint. Grab the spider. Whoa, 70 stars. Can we go fight Bowser now? Uh, you can try. Maybe. Maybe I just might. Alright, and this section coming up is like another minigame. Uh, this is the one that awards the thousand ducats for this level. And every marathon run I've done, I've said how easy it is and then messed it up. So I will try to break the streak by uh, not talking during it. But first, there's this elevator. Shadows to Camilo. Found the clip. Pretty cool. Saves like, I don't know, half a second, but it's really. Uh, so yeah, Harry, Yeah, you? so the main, well, the only goal here is to collect 20 of these gold crates. Um, so the pattern is absolutely predetermined, but you also saw there or there, um, it's not just gold crates that are spawning. So you obviously want to avoid the things that are not the crates, because otherwise you just, uh, yeah, have to start over. Basically the pattern is, 
yeah, as I said, predetermined, but after 16 uh, or whatever, however many, it starts to loop. So you kind of just have to memorize what is spawn, and you were already ready there. And uh, yeah, looking clean so far. Yeah. Should be fine. If I just don't miss boxes, uh, there will be no more fish. So. First marathon run, we don't mess this up. Awesome. Ooh. Yeah, that's clap worthy. The really easy minigame. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, there you go. 3000 <laughs> Duke. Uh, so, th as usual, there should be a boss after that level. But because the coins are awarded right as you collect the 20th box, uh, you actually don't need to don't need to continue to the boss. You can just quit to hub. Because the only thing locking this level is the the money. So we paid the three thousand ducats. We are broke, uh, but we do not need any more money. We can just go and get our sweet sweet revenge. Whatever. Yeah, it's also noteworthy that you can quit to the hub at any time during a level, but once you're in a boss fight, you can't. Yeah. So it's one of the main reasons why we couldn't really avoid too many of the boss fights, apart from them also unlocking the later levels. Cool little shortcut here. The camera might spaz out, just so you know. Okay, not too bad. That that like doorway tends to mess with the camera for some reason. Here's a little skip. Uh, I genuinely never done this level casually, so I don't know how much it saves. Yeah, this looks fine. Yeah, this looks fine. I'll grab this checkpoint just because. <laughs> previous levels <laughs> and then we will jump over this wall on the left hopefully this jump is kind of tight nice and drop down into the void as you do it's just normal kangaroo things you know and this part coming up is kind of scary i hope it okay i got the checkpoint nice I have no idea what the checkpoint is, but I could hear it being picked up. So that's convenient. Because uh, this part, it's another like chase section, except because the camera trigger wasn't loaded. Uh, you don't see like from the front, you, you have the normal camera, which is really nice. Uh, what isn't nice is the collision on these uh, following the blocks. Sometimes you'll just, K will just slide along them instead of being able to jump, and there's not much you can do. Uh, Another nice thing about the skip we did is the huge ship that was shooting cannonballs at the floor that we were running on just didn't load, so I'm just gonna like fall into the water here and enter the secret ghost ship, I guess. You know, I'm just kangaroo things. And yeah, this is the last platform level of the run. It's just this, uh, which has a couple more skips. And then the final boss. Yes, hello. Oh, come on. Yep. This part is kind of scary, like there's a soft lock that you could get, I will not be risking it. But like if you roll off this button in the like time you have before the cutscene, you can get stuck in that like spike ball and just get soft lock. Isn't like a huge deal in a marathon setting, but I'd rather not, you know. And then these spikes down here are instant death, so obviously I'll take like the riskiest jumps possible. Very nice. Okay, and then one more. There we go. Nice. Okay. That should be the spooky section done. Should be. Come on. Ow. This section is really annoying to optimize. We did it. Alright, and this part has the parrot in this huge cage in the middle of the room, I think. Uh, and you're supposed to like, I don't know, raise the water level, and then raise the cage, and free it, and blah 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 blah, and that, who cares? Who cares? Uh, I don't. So, as usual, I'll just make fun of the prisoners by jumping on top of the cage. And... 
let's walk into the void once again. Oh yeah, that's the final duel. While we just throw a bunch of boomerangs at Hunter. So again, three phases, though this time, for once, not repeating, they're completely separate. Uh, so first of all, throw two boomerangs at him. You can throw three for extra damage, but you only need two. Uh, at his balloon and that will cause him to move over to the other side then you can get like a couple more hits as he's crossing by which isn't hugely important but it, it helps with the last phase I guess saves like a hit or two um, and you do this like six times I think I think we got one more loop uh, like back and forth and then we'll move on to the second phase which is sort of like running away from Exploding, like the, the bridges explode under you and you have to run away. Yep, so the parrot that we didn't free is now free and will help us. Uh, through phase two, this is like the really scary part. Because uh, the, the water is, of course, instant death. Uh, I don't want to fall in. Would really prefer not to. I mean, it should be. It's really not that difficult. It's just kind of scary because you know, end of the run, nerves are there. And we begin phase three, where Hunter just kind of gets sunlocked to death. So time is coming up shortly. Oh, nice! Unloaded the the balloon. I'll hit it. Sure. Yeah. So just sunlock, and in the cutscene, that is time. The 1-0. That's honestly with that beginning, I'm super happy with 1-0. That's crazy. Uh, all right, quick shout outs to all the KO runners. Uh, Zoe, Cube, Shotu, I'm forgetting like everyone, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, huge shout outs. Super awesome community, super wholesome. Um, run retail, don't run digital. Thank you. Okay, do you have anything to say? I'm all good. All right, well, I think we're ready to get going. Thank you so much for that amazing round rhythm. But stay tuned, everyone, because the animal block is continuing with some bug snacks run by Sodon 2. Coming right up soon. <laughs> 